16 million soldiers are sent overseas to fight in World War II, where approximately 1 million women of German, Japanese, Australian, English, and many more descents met their husbands to therefore make a journey to foreign lands for love. They faced many challenges and their movement and relationships with Americans created an exchange of cultures and their encounters and explorations in America would change the status of the country forever. Beginning in 1939, World War II wreaks havoc on the world, involving 113 countries over six continents, as Allied countries fought to stop Nazi Germany. Though Americans managed to stay out of the conflict for some time, the occurrences of Pearl Harbor in 1941 inspired America's entrance, causing the war to take a turn. However, as the battle lasted four more years, American soldiers had plenty of time to spend in the countries they traveled to. In fact, enough time to meet their new spouses. War brides, or GI brides, is the term used to describe the millions of women across the world who married men foreign to their own culture as a result of the return migration that military inspires in times of war. Women from over 50 different countries made the journey across oceans to the home of their husbands, marrying from the years 1942 and 1952, then making the journey across oceans to the home of their husband. They met in common places, commonly dance halls. They would dance the jitterbug and other dances, and many women would swoon over the excitement of the foreign men. From first encounters, the women saw American men as a breath of fresh air, not to mention the luxuries and materials, such as clothing and chocolate, that American men shared with the foreigners. Men, who on average would spend 16 months overseas, found in the local woman companionship and excitement. On the other hand, the men of the countries the Americans visited found them to pose a threat of stealing all the potential brides. Fights would break out, further deepening conflict between troops at war on a personal level. Still, that didn't stop the men from courting the young women, bringing gifts and promises of safety, comfort, and opportunity. They were viewed by many women as a source of solace and hope, causing many a young woman to accept when the gentlemen of battle would propose marriage. The abundance of these unions inspired the creation of the War Brides Act on December 28th of 1945, which stated, Alien spouses or alien children of the United States citizens serving in or having an honorable discharge certificates from the armed forces of the United States during the Second World War shall, if otherwise admissible under the immigration laws and if application for admission is made within years of the effective date of the act, be admitted to the United States. This act excluded those with physical or mental disabilities, and each potential immigrant had to withstand specific requirements and laws. It exempted the spouses from the quotas of the Immigration Acts of 1924, most heavily benefiting the Chinese population, who were less affected by the Chinese Exclusion Act. Later, in 1946, the Alien Fiancés and Fiancés Act extended the abilities and privileges of those to be married to military personnel. However, the abundance of these newly engaged and wedded couples across the globe were the source of a lot of tension, both personally and throughout the government and society. Many people disproved of the couples profoundly, especially when the involvement was between non-allied countries, such as the heaping number of relationships between German foreign lines and American soldiers. The U.S. military discouraged any fraternization with the women upon arriving, as did the said country's nationalists, viewing it as a conflict of interest and a distraction, placing early restrictions. Back in America, there are many who oppose the lovebirds as well, knowing it could lead to an increase of immigration. The families of the young ladies commonly were against the marriages, and even if they approved of the couple, the acceptance of seeing their daughters and sisters move across the world was not often seen. The restrictions of matrimony between some cultures were more lenient than others. There was a direct ban on the marriage of American soldiers and German women, which was universally ignored by many couples. They would marry in secret and some would have illegitimate children. Though the law was lifted in December of 1946, many restrictions were placed on the brides of the soldiers 
hoping to join them in their home countries. There were precise screenings and three-month waiting periods, but still the women in love made it through these obstacles. And during and after the time of the World War, 100,000 British brides, 150,000 to 200,000 continental European brides, 16,000 Australian and New Zealand brides, 50,000 to 100,000 from Japan and the Far East, and numbers close to 20,000 German war brides successfully emigrated from their homes to meet their husbands in the United States. They boarded boats and the waves of women begin their move. Aboard the ships were war brides, their young children, and often injured soldiers who at hundreds to tens of thousands at a time made the long journeys to docks in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and the many other U.S. cities their soldiers inhabited upon ships known as the War Brides Operation. One famous ship was the Queen Mary, which under military instruction made its fastest cross-Atlantic journey, docking the G.I. Brides in only a little more than three days. Most journeys, however, were not so quick. The journeys were known to be rough, the cause of sickness, boredom, and weight loss. Upon arrival, there are more challenges to face, but in America was their new love and new chances. They were often greeted by cameras, slowly weaving a new social fabric as the excitement of arrival inspired an exchange of culture. After some time, all of the excitement died down. These women faced many additional challenges in society and in their new lives. However, the women would remain optimistic, for they were amongst loved ones in a new country with many opportunities. Well, the date for my trip, I was, just, I was just engaged. Well, the best thing in America was my husband. These numbers of women and children of a variety of cultures would come to heavily impact the status of America, creating a population of many ethnicities. A common trend amongst these populations of young women were to form societies of women in the same situation, forming war bride clubs across the United States. Some included the Canadian War Brides Bureau, as well as the Transatlantic Brides and Parents Association. Many of these unions are still alive today, they worked together in becoming acclimated to their new homes and lives, as so many had warm friendships aboard boats on long journeys. The War Brides had a heavy impact on America. Due greatly to their exchanging of cultures amongst the U.S. population, the country would become culturally diverse. These encounters with American soldiers furthered encounters that caused new trends, societies, and ways of life to form. The G.I. Bride's exploration into new lands and in different kinds of relationships allowed an exploration of those in America to experience a different variety of people every time they walked down the street.